If we fail at being entertainers, if we fail at being sports, we result to the other one. You feel me? Like, damn, man, I couldn't make it. And this is why, here's the thing. This is why parents that's in the hood, they push their kids into sports because they feel like this is the only way out. Kid don't even want to play sports. Kid probably just want to play sports to have fun. But we ain't never encouraged, yo, you could be a, you can be an investor. Here's the dope part. As an investor, it's a good chance you can make as much, if not more, than all of the other ones. And have longevity. This is why most, like the great sports players, like LeBron, Kevin Durant, Nas, Jay, they've made more money off investments than they, the late, great Kobe, they've laid more money off investments than they did in the rap game. Oh, sports. My thing is not about music, it's saying like, when can the music start teaching the tools that's needed to uplift our culture? When can the music start giving us the tools to be better businessmen and women, right? When, when can that happen? When can we start saying, yo, like, check this out. Like, let's talk to the people how, we, how they can become, how they can start their own record label the right way. How can they take advantage of their intellectual property? How can they start treating themselves as businesses and not artists? See this beautiful thing we have called the internet? That 100% leveled the playing field. It leveled the playing field. But here's the problem. We want to get entertained more than we want to get educated. We won't get entertained more than we get educated because the entertainment takes us away from the reality of what we live in. It hurt being at the bottom. It hurt struggling. I know that the education ain't gonna change my life right then and there. So you know what? I would rather just laugh, but not knowing that's even more painful. I had this saying where I tell people, I said, listen, if you look at your circle right now, look at your circle right now. If the people around you in your circle hasn't changed your life or impacted your life or made you say, damn, I gotta level up in the last three to five years, you need to change that circle. So for the last three to five years, we've been doing the same thing. Been going to the club. We've been, you know, taking a little trip to Miami, smoking hookahs, birthday parties. Been doing the same thing the last three to five years. Ain't nobody changed. Everybody on the same job, like everybody going in and out of job. Everybody got the same hustle. Everybody trying to start the same clothing line. That's it. Nothing changed. Nobody in the last three to five years said, yo, let me, let's, yo, let's put together some money and you go get mentored you come bring the information back and give us the game since all of us can't go right you know money kind of tight cool all of us can't go how much the mentorship okay cool look we all gonna put in this money we not gonna go to we not gonna go to club we not gonna do this we're gonna get the mentorship that's online we all gonna look at it through your computer we're gonna start this business all right we all not gonna go out what we gonna do is we're gonna take the money we all gonna try to buy a property we all gonna start a business we, we don't, we don't want to do that, but we all came, man, how much that section costs? You got a birthday dinner? Let's all go to the birthday dinner. Think about this though. If somebody has a party, we get prepared for the party two weeks ahead of time. You setting your, your, your haircut time, you setting what clothes you gonna wear, you prepare for the party two weeks ahead of time. Nobody's prepared to be successful. Nobody prepares to build wealth. How we gonna attain something? We put more, we put more time into, so again, we rather be entertained and educated. Not knowing that the information is the fertilizer. Your money should be used for three things. Information, access, assets. If you use the majority of your money for them three things, your life will change. Because the more information you can take in, the more you can apply, the more access you have. So you get access. So what do, you, what do we mean by access? Okay, so if there's a VI, if there's a somebody hosting an event, they got a VIP. I won't go to the VIP. I won't get close as I can to the person who's teaching. It's the equivalent to me sitting in the front of the class. All right, general admissions for everybody. Y'all gonna sit in the back of the class, cool. The VIP say I get to go right next to the teacher. Call me what you want. I'm gonna make use of this information, right? Access, so we see companies going IPO, pre-IPO, all of this. Yo, how do I get that? You gotta get access. So you gotta go pay to get. The problem is we think this is a flaw in our culture too. We think everything's supposed to be given to us. You owe me, no, I don't owe you nothing. You owe yourself. It is so easy to be broke. It is so easy to live an average life. I tell people this all the time, like if you wake up every day and say, it's my fault, it'll change your life in 90 days. So every day you wake up, you're like, you know what, this ain't the life I want, but you know what? It's my fault. I don't care what happened. Because if you eliminate the, the way you can place the blame at, you now put it all on you. If you put it all on you, you wake up every day and say, it's my fault. Every day you wake up, you brush your teeth, man. My life is cool, but I ain't where I won't be at. It's my fault. Wait, what? I got, it's a cool crib I got, but it ain't the, it's my fault. My bank account cool, but it, it's my fault. Cause now we can stop putting the blame on somebody else. Man, you supposed to do this for free. Nope, it's my fault. I ain't got the money to buy that course yet. Cause I went and bought this, that, and the other. I bought every pair of J's that come out. I went to every 
club it had. I bought every shirt that came out. I bought this, I bought that. I've been on every online boutique online. I'm looking, it's my fault. It ain't one event that changed your life. It's a, it's a group of collection of events that happen. You compound the bullshit. You compounding that bullshit. So now when you see somebody doing something, you like, why you ain't give me that for free? Why? Why you ain't pay for it? How you spend your money says a lot about you and what you believe your life should be. How you spend your money, that, that dictates that. My biggest fear, bro, I ain't even gonna lie to you. My biggest fear is knowing that I got the opportunity to change my family life and I ain't take advantage of it. That's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is saying, yo, right now is the golden opportunity for us to build wealth and change our family life. And I ain't take opportunity, I ain't take advantage of that because I'm on the party. I ain't take advantage of that because I wanted to be fly. I would wear this Wall Street Chapel shit every day of my life. As long as I know I'm anti my people, my, my, my bloodline. Well, I'm changing, check this out. I'm altering the purchasing power of my family. Let that sink in. If we, if, we, if we take the holidays, everybody get together for the holidays, everybody get around and watch TV and do all that. We put everybody together and say, what is our purchasing power? What can we buy together as a group, as a whole? What can we buy? So here's the opportunity where I'm saying I'm in a golden era where I can increase my family. Probably about 40 acres. But the goal is to buy 110. That's what people don't know. There's another 70 acres around where we bought the property at. The goal is to own all that. All 110 acres. All we increase, listen, if you're not the asset to your family, you're the liability. There's no gray area. There's no gray area. There's no gray area. If you're not adding to the family wealth, if you're not adding to the family, not again, we talked about it earlier. Generational wealth starts with generational principles and values. What are we doing with the money that we make? What is like, what is the family's mission statement? Man, what you talking about, Travel? Your family is a business. Everybody out here acting like individual entities. Family is a whole business. How you think these people will get rich, man? What this book at, man? What would the Rockefellers do? You know them people, that's a name. That's a name. What is book in here somewhere? What would the Rockefeller do? Somewhere in here, this is a name. What is that book at? It's somewhere in this thing, man. Right here. What would the Rockefellers do? This is a this is a brand name. The Rock, this is a brand name. Ford. That is a brand name. That is a that's somebody's last name, Henry Ford. That is a brand name. You feel what I'm saying? Walmart. This is a this is a brand name. This ain't just something we came up with. It's Sam Walton. Walmart. The Mars family. The, the, the chocolate. This is a, this is a, people treat their last name like a corporation. Why are you acting like an individual entity? That's why you can't go nowhere. Everybody won't fuss and complain. We not, let's come together and build some wealth. This is why wealthy families, this is why wealthy families keep wealth and rich families go broke. Because there's a big difference between wealthy and rich. We too busy trying to be rich. Nobody won't be wealthy. We keep confusing that shit.